G'day guys and gal, 99% of Trader or Chaos Space Marines are for lack of a better word and because it's the first 30 seconds of a YouTube video, a bunch of drongos. Characters who used to be cool or were just straight up never cool, now have been a bunch of one dimensional mustache twirling villains. It's a really unfortunate trend with the super boring ones like Typhus, Corferon and Lucius being given all the plot armor in the world, whilst the super interesting ones that somehow actually make you kind of understand the motives of the literal forces of hell all get killed or just become lame. Chief amongst these dope ass but taken too soon characters is Argul Tal, one of the only tolerable word bearers and genuinely the only space marine that I know of that became not just friends with the custodies but genuine battle brothers with them. Yeah, needless to say that friendship ended horribly, but since the Custodes generally despised the Astartes legions even before the heresy, that was a bit of a big deal. Especially when you remember that the word bearers were on the naughty list at the time. The point I'm making is Argultal is worth the next 15 minutes of your life, so buckle up buckaroo. Before we get started, being healthy is a vibe. That isn't a controversial statement. However, improving your health can just be a massive seebs. Like who can be bothered? That's why I made it my mission to uncover all the ways I can cut corners and take shortcuts to be healthy. Maximum health, minimum effort. One of the best ways I've been doing that in the past few months is with today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens AG1 says who can be stuffed hunting down all the different micronutrients, eating a bunch of weird fruit or taking a bunch of supplements. Why can't we all just like put it into one powder and call it a day? So that's exactly what they did. AG1 is the only powder you'll need with a ton of micronutrients that support your digestion, energy, brain, immunity, aging and recovery. All you do is slap a scoop in a glass then mix whatever liquid you like with it and bam! Personally, I really enjoy it with coconut water as the flavors complement each other. I definitely feel the difference when I'm using it and I know you will too. So to get your very own AG1 as well as a year supply of immune supporting D3, K2 and five travel packs for free, then use my link below. Cheers to AG Greens for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the life and tragedy of Argul Tal, the only word bearer I've ever liked, the man that proved that just because you're a heretical traitor who is 50% demon, doesn't mean you can't be an absolute bro. Uh, let's get into it. Argultar's life was destined for tragedy as soon as he was chosen to become an Astartes as a child. The reason for this was that Erebus chose Argul, and if there's anything we know about Warhammer, it's that Erebus fucking ruins everything. Argul didn't let this dissuade him however. After kissing his teary sisters goodbye and finishing his Astartes trials, he genuinely threatened Erebus' life and told the creepy piece of shit to get fucked, opting to go down the path of the warrior rather than the chaplain. Now to me, it's not clear what Erebus did to make Argul literally nearly kill him, but it was probably just Erebus being Erebus. Regardless, Argul telling Erebus to eat shit and then opting to dual wield swords rather than use a bitch ass Crozius was a badass move in its own right. This is important as Erebus was a master manipulator, yet Argul seemed to be one of the only people in existence who was able to resist his bullshit. Argul was a legendary warrior of the Serrated Sun chapter, one of the many chapters within the Wordbearer Legion, distinguishing himself on dozens of battlefields. He was a devout follower of Lorga and the belief in the God Emperor, but he was also a pragmatist and a free thinker, seeing Corferon as a cranky old bitch and Erebus as a creepy kitty fiddler, even though they were exalted and chosen by Lorga. When Gilliman, at the behest of the Emperor, destroyed Monarchia and humiliated the Wordbearers as punishment for them not only praising the Emperor as a god in a secular Imperium, but more importantly, having the slowest compliance rate of conquered worlds in the entire galaxy, it was Argul who helped raise Lorga to his feet and get him out of sight, as the Primarch of the Wordbearers was having a bit of a mental breakdown and was super embarrassing for his sons. Lorga remembered Argul for this and started paying attention to the Astartes, liking the straight talking and genuine style. He also liked the fact that Argul wasn't just a cock sucking simp for him, but a man with his own convictions and will. If a pragmatic man like Argul agreed with him, then he must be right. After the Empress spanked his ass and told him to stop trying to Jehovah witness the galaxy, Lorga decided that instead of heeding the Emperor's words, he would try and find other gods to worship. However, the Emperor had placed 20 custodians as watchers over the Wordbearer Legion, ensuring that any further signs of fanaticism would be reported. To get around this, Lorga split up his fleet, forcing the 20 custodians to split into teams of three or four to keep watch over the divided legion. Whilst Lorga graciously asked Argul Tal permission to join his small fleet for a time. See, Lorga knew that he couldn't direct his main fleet to find some gods. It would be way too sus, but a minor fleet, much easier. 
Argul and Lorgar carve their way to the edge of Imperial space, devastating a number of worlds along the way to A, rack up some dank compliances, after all a genocided population is a compliant one, and B, to vent some rage from the incidences of the past few years. Eventually Lorgar heard a voice calling to him, a voice emanating from Cadia, a world next to the Eye of Terror, hence Lorgar and Argul went to investigate. Here is where shit gets spicy. Cadia wasn't yet this bastion of the Imperium, it was a lush and verdant world with a few tribes of chaos worshipping primitives. The word bearers were shocked that the natives spoke a dialect of Colchisian, the language of their homeworld, and investigated further. Well that investigation resulted in Lorga and his chosen captains being present to witness a blood ritual, with a spastic naked lady running around and people getting flayed and impaled on stuff. Definitely wasn't compatible with the Imperial truth. Lorgar was like, hmm, interesting. Argo was like, what the fuck dad, this is retarded. And the custodian with them at the time was like, okay, well, Lorgar, you're definitely a fucking heretic. And proceeds to kill most of the word bearers present. He then tries to kill Lorgar. However, Argul, despite being disgusted with the ritual and a friend of the custodian, stabs the golden warrior in the face and incapacitates him. Yes, that's right. A sword through the head was only enough to incapacitate a custodian. It didn't even knock him out. The custodian was then used as the final blood sacrifice, which turned the spaz naked lady into a demon prince. The guide who would reveal the truth of the gods to the word bearers. Now you might be wondering, if Argo was such a likable pragmatic guy, why was he going along with such an insane plan and willing to work with a demon. Well, he was obscenely loyal to Lorgar, so loyal in fact that he became concerned that it was his gene-coded loyalty and not his genuine loyalty that kept him at Lorgar's side. He was also desperate for the truth. Was there gods in the galaxy? Was the Emperor right or had they been lied to? His love of his father and his desperation for answers is what kept pushing him onwards down the road of damnation, despite how much he loathed all the twisted things that were occurring. During the Custodian's rampage, he had killed the chapter master of the Serrated Sun, Argyll's chapter paving the way for Argul's ascension to become Lord of the Chapter. Argul and 100 of his battle brothers ventured into the Eye of Terror with the Demon Prince and witnessed numerous visions. Visions of the Elder's Fall, visions of potential futures, and other things which basically confirmed that the gods were real and they were all dicks. It was during one of these visions that, that Argul and his word bearers actually sabotaged the Primarch project and were partially responsible for the scattering of the Primarchs. Argul was conflicted. On one hand, he had the truth. On the other hand, he saw that the truth was horrific and it may even be a good idea keeping it to themselves for the sake of peace in the galaxy. Finally, the Demon Prince told them to lower their Gellifields. Argo was like, how about fucking no? But the Demon was like, pretty please, my hot Demon friend is outside and she has eight tits. So Argo was like, okay, fair enough, lower the Gellifields. Argul and his 100 Astartes, along with every mortal crew member on the ship at the time, were then violently slaughtered by the demons that now ravaged the ship. But he survived! His death paved the way for a demon called Rum to enter his body, bringing him back to life with his soul and consciousness intact. The same thing happened to the other 99 marines on the ship, however the entire mortal crew remained dead. Argo was like, okay, time to go. However, with no mortal crew and the ship badly damaged, it took them seven months to get out of the eye. Seven months of no food or water. Hence the word bearers ate the dead crew, then begun eating each other. Only about 40 of the marines made it back, and yeah, they weren't feeling too hot. It is a bit retarded by chaos, creating 100 super soldier demon warriors, but then because you were too stupid to not fuck their ship, over 60% of them would die from thirst and starvation. Now you might be like, aren't the other custodians super sus right now? After all, Lorga had just authorized the use of them as a blood sacrifice to summon a demon. Well, the word bearers basically said that the tribesmen of Cadia attacked them, killing a number of word bearers and the custodian. Hence, they orbitably bombed the planet and destroyed all evidence of the contrary. This was enough to appease the custodian as Argul, who they trusted, confirmed the story. Argul spoke of what he had experienced to Lorga, speaking as both Argul Tal and Ram simultaneously, creating a pretty funny conversation where at times Argul was like, yes sire, yes father, this is what happened, I love you. And then he would be like, eat a dick Lorga, you scrotum face, as the demon's influence would come into play. To award his sons for their hectic experience, Lorga named the surviving marines the Galvorbak, granting them use of crimson armor, the first word bearers to do so. For the next 40 years or so, Argo would fight alongside his serrated son as well as the Custodians, becoming ever closer to them, especially their leader Aqualon. Argyll and Aqualon would call each other brother and become so good at fighting alongside each other that there was no enemy that stood a chance against them. 
For the most part, Raum stayed dormant and there wasn't much chaos activity. Argyll and his chapter were biding their time, awaiting for the summons that would signal the start of the Horus Heresy. The only chaos thing that was happening was a horrific ritual where an astropath would get tortured and possessed in order to block the astropathic messages that Aqualon was sending back to Terra. The word bearers were then able to change the message to be more positive and less suspicious. Likewise, they were able to modify the messages they were receiving from Terra. It was a necessary ritual to keep the attention off the word bearers, but Argyll found it extremely distasteful, forcing himself to watch as punishment against himself for allowing such a vile ritual to occur under his watch. Shit like this is why I like Argyll. He values truth above all else, hence accepts that the Horus Heresy must occur in the name of truth. He sees Chaos as his gods, but he isn't sadistic. He had a close brotherhood with his fellow marines, especially Zaphon, the chaplain, and his best friend was a mortal blind woman who he used as his moral compass and confessor. At the same time, he maintained a close bond and brotherhood to Aqualon, and even though it was based in deception, it was still a genuine brotherhood. Argyll knew that he would have to kill the custodians eventually, but he kept putting it off and making up excuses to delay it, not wanting to actually do it. Even when the Isvan dropsite massacre was to occur, the battle where the Salamanders, Iron Hands and Raven Guard were to be betrayed and bukakied by the Night Lords, Alpha Legion, Wordbearers and Iron Warriors, while they were also fighting the Sons of Horus, Empress Children and Death Guard, Argyll put the custodians on a different ship and then told the captain and navigator of that ship to delay so that the custodians would miss the battle and could be captured instead. Fuck, I mean, even the moment where Argyll orders his word bearers to fire upon the loyalists on Isfun, it's a heavy hitting scene. He is voxing a Raven Guard captain who is overjoyed and laughing and telling him how good it is to see Argyll and his word bearers. How Argyll should enjoy some of the glory before the Raven Guard then praises the word bearers' legion. Argyll knows he needs the order he's meant to shoot the Raven Guard, but the order gets caught in his throat as he has a flashback to his family, his sisters, and the oaths he has made. He knows how fucked up what he's about to do is and he literally says out loud, forgive me, before finally ordering his men to mow down the loyalists. Remember, he did all of this with a super angry demon inside of him, a demon that wanted to kill and eat everyone. The dude was the most human space marine I've read about in a while, and he was half demon. Jesus. The loyalists were being slaughtered, but they weren't going down without a fight. Corvus Korax plunged into the Wordbearer's line and became a living meat grinder, killing dozens every minute. Argyll charges his Galvor back in to fight the Raven Guard Primarch, and they too start getting slaughtered. Lorgar freaks out. Argyll is his favorite son, and he loves his Galvor back, and now they're all about to die. So Lorgar charges Korax to try save them. By this point, however, 30 out of the 40 Galvor back were killed, and Lorgar gets his shit kicked in. However, during the fight, the Galvaback undergo their true transformation, with bone, claws and corruption twisting their forms and making them the first genuine possessed marines. Unlike most union of demon and man, the Galvaback had a symbiotic relationship with their demons, able to work with them and maintain control rather than just being a meat suit. This didn't necessarily make it pleasant though. The transformation was agonizingly painful, with Argyll literally trying to kill himself by ripping out his own organs to try and make it stop. Even though it was probably the best possession you can get, Argyll wouldn't wish it on anyone and saw it as a sacrifice that he and his Galvaback had to make so no one else would have to. This contrasts with Lorgar who saw the Galvaback as humanity's next evolution. Argyll and his demon brothers rip through the loyalists with ease. They are now about the level of a custodian and they kill space marines with the ease of a custodian. Meanwhile, Aqualon and his custodians have finally arrived on Argyll Tal's ship and they discover the word bearer's betrayal. They decide to go Leroy Jenkins mode, killing a fuckload of people on the ship and even murdering Argyll's blind beard. FF baby. Argyll rushes to the ship, but it's too late. She dies in his hands as the custodians escape to the surface of Isvan, with Argyll hot on their trail. Argyll finds Aqualon and his remaining two custodians. It's about a 10 verse 3. Argyll is enraged that Aqualon killed his waifu, telling him it was betrayal. Aqualon laughs in Argyll's faith and says, Mate, you can't say shit about betrayal, you fuckwit. Even in his demonic state and enraged, Argyll still tries to tell Aqualon that they are wrong and that the truth is important. Aqualon just looks at Argyll with disgust. See, the Custodes knew a lot more about Chaos than most. They knew about the entities of the Wharf that called themselves gods, and they knew they were evil as shit. The Emperor kept the truth from humanity, as if the Emperor didn't know the truth and ignored it, then those Chaos gods would wither and the truth would fade and dissolve, creating a new truth. As such, Aqualon could do nothing but smile at Argyll's foolishness and pity him. The Galvaback attacked, 
One custodian was able to kill one before he was cut apart. Aqualon then scores another kill before Argul tears his head off. He's brother of nearly five decades. The final custodian had been undergoing a vow of silence and hadn't spoken in 40 years. However, faced with his own death, he decided to break it after he threw his spear at one of the Galva back, Argul's best friend Zaphon, killing him instantly. The custodian starts laughing, saying the first and last thing he would in 40 years. I always hated you, Zaphon, before he too was torn to shreds. In a single day, Argul had lost his blind best friend, his closest Astartes battle brother Zaphon, and his best mate Aqualon. All he now had was rum, and Raum wasn't exactly good company. The tale of Argultar's bromanship doesn't end there, just because all of his friends were killed. No, he actually managed to form an extremely close bond with Khan, helping the World Eater to balance his berserkers' rage. They met as Argul was assigned to the World Eater's Legion and their Shadow Crusade across Ultramar. Each battle and victory brought Argul and Khan closer until they became honor brothers. Argul's influence on Khan was actually becoming problematic for Chaos. See, Khan wanted Khan as his avatar, but for Khan to become that, he would have to go insano style. But with Argul as his friend, Khan didn't want to go insano style. Hence, during a hectic battle against the Ultramarines and Gilliman, the one where Angron became a demon prince and Gilliman and Lorga punched on, Argul expended a lot of his strength saving Khan. As the battle wrapped up and the weakened Argul spoke to Erebus, Raum was like, Argul, kill that bold motherfucker right now! Kill him! Kill him! And Argo was like, chillax Raum, I'm not just gonna kill the first chaplain of my own legion. Well, sometimes a demon is right, as Erebus then proceeded to stab Argo in the back with a magic blade, unceremoniously ending the life of one of the greatest traitor marines to ever live. See, Argyll had gotten cocky about his life, as there was a prophecy that he would die under the shadows of great wings. At first he thought this was about Korax, but then he was told it'd be about Sanguinius during the Siege of Terra. But no, he died then and there, in the shadow of a large Imperator-class Titan which had a massive Imperial Aquila on it, technically fulfilling the prophecy. Erebus claims that he killed Argyll to ensure Khan would ascend to become Khorne's champion, but it was clear that there was also spitefulness and jealousy there. Spiteful that Argyll resisted Erebus, and jealousy that Lorga chose Argyll as his favoured son. Lorga and Khan were both devastated with Argyll's death, Lorga got revenge by telling Khan that Erebus did it, and Khan tried to get revenge on Erebus by beating the shit out of him and attempting to kill him. However, Chaos wasn't done with Erebus yet, so it teleported him away to safety. Khan would not get another chance, as the next big events were the Siege of Terra and his subsequent death at the hands of Sigismund. But it did give us a pretty cool scene of the usually cool and collected Erebus freaking the fuck out while Khan told him to get up and face his death like a man. Regardless, Argyll's life and death was a tragedy, giving us one less genuinely good Chaos character. Only in Warhammer can a half-demon warrior be the most relatable and wholesome bad guy. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up a major mini, a big range with some of the best miniatures out there, produced by yours truly. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more demonically wholesome content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.